yo, 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 what up? All right, guys and gals and people. So I thought I would do this quick live to kind of talk to you guys about which of the three carriers that I was using that was actually most dependable uh, when I went to go see my dad. It was kind of surprising. It yielded, it yielded really weird results. So majority of the trip, I was using the AT&T Business Elite line and then um, my Visible line, which Visible is Verizon. Um, and, you know, I really, I really felt like, you know, I, I went with those two over my Google Fi line because Google Fi uses T-Mobile. It piggybacks off of T-Mobile's network. That's who they use. I mean, it piggybacks off T-Mobile and U.S. Cellular. Um, so I figured, you know, with Verizon being, uh, being good for travel, um, AT&T being good, I figured, you know, well, you know, it, it, it would be good. And, and it was to an extent it was, I mean, visible was actually in third visible, you know, worked out, um, to a degree, but there was, um, there was times where it just wasn't reliable when I needed it. And so the AT&T Business Elite line was the one that I mostly depended on um, when using um, my phones when traveling. What's up, Gene? What's going on? So the shocker of all of it, <laughs> the shocker of all of it is that um, when I was heading back from Oklahoma back to Arizona, I decided to go ahead and just download the eSIM for my Google Fi line onto my Pixel 5. And it shocked me because it was mostly connected to T-Mobile. It you know it didn't it didn't smart switch to U.S. Cellular often. I mean in Oklahoma it did, but right when, you know when when traveling right when I got into the uh, the Texas Panhandle, it was just mostly reliable uh, relying on T-Mobile's network, and that that was shocking. That that was the one that was the most reliable. <laughs> it was the most reliable. I was like. Wait a minute. And it wasn't even on 5G because if you run dual SIM DS, DS on, a, on a Pixel 5, then 5G is not accessible. It only can connect to um, Google Fi 5G if it's just a single SIM on the phone. So if you have the eSIM uh, for Google Fi and then another carrier SIM in there, 5G won't turn on. So it was only on LTE and it just surprisingly was... Uh, connected most of the time like throughout the trip there was areas where like visible just completely had no connection and then there was areas where you know for AT&T business elite which has a high QCI level it just for some reason just wasn't uh like it had de it had dead spots but the one that <laughs> that uses T-Mobile's network which is Google Fi that had to be the one that stayed connected um from Oklahoma all the way back to Arizona so that was that was a shocker that was an absolute shocker I was not expecting that at all whatsoever so um yeah I, I'll say this that um you know along with what you know Sneed's been showing uh because I've I seen his videos he's been talking about T-Mobile and you know N41 connections and you know how, how that's been looking and um and I can pretty much validate what he's saying um that T-Mobile is getting better, you know, which is good. I mean, that's what we wanted all along was for T-Mobile to get better. And it looks like that that's happening. So that's always, that's always good. Um, on top of that, I don't know if I'm going to, to do it tonight. I probably won't do it tonight. Um, maybe, let's see, I'm going to be really busy tomorrow, so I'm not sure. I don't know. I may, I may jump on late tonight on a YouTube live stream and talk about the days of the, you know, the good old stuff that Google Fi used to do. Um, the, the, the cool things about Google Fi and why I like them and everything like that. I'll probably be like the first live stream that I do on YouTube to kick off 2021. Uh, I might do that tonight. What's up? What's going on, man? Nothing much. Um, I might do that later tonight because tomorrow I'm going to be like hella busy. So I probably won't even have time to do a live stream tomorrow on YouTube. Um, but yeah. Uh, of my findings, Google Fi from this uh, vacation trip was more dependable. And I should have, I should have had it connected to my Pixel 5 while I was in Oklahoma those, those couple of days. Um, but I just felt like 
You know, because the way that Google Fi was acting for a while, it wasn't it wasn't acting uh, very dependable in the last couple of months. So I was just like, I wasn't even gonna have it the, the service connected to my phone. I was just gonna run off of AT and T and off of off of Visible, which is Verizon. And uh, yeah, you need to get that plugged in. Yeah, I got it. Got it. Thank you. Other mm -hmm. way. There it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know. Um, also, a couple of things that's kind of like being like, you know, where I've been kind of mostly active at. I've been mostly active on Parlor. Uh, if you don't know what Parlor is, I'm probably going to do a video for both here on, on IGTV and on YouTube explaining what Parlor is. It is a social platform that I've been using. Um, a lot more only because with parlor they're 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 not censoring anything you know what I mean um, parlor is very similar to what Twitter is uh, minus the stories that Twitter just recently got which they call their fleet their fleets or whatever um, so you don't have like Twitter sto you don't have like stories like Twitter uh, and you cannot go live on parlor at least not right now burrito first should we or go to the store first uh, what time does uh, Pete's Fish and Chips close? Ten. Ten? Oh. Uh, we have time, right? To go to the store first. Where do you want to go shop at? To keep your store. My store? Yeah. Just check it out. But, um, yeah, so Parlor is actually kind of like Twitter. You know, you, you post your post. Um, it, it, don't be intimidated by it if you guys you know especially those that watch the replay if you guys are like interested and want to go check it out like yes it's very political a lot of people share their their political opinions because it is a social platform that's not censoring anybody and not hiding anybody's posts you know as long as you're not cyber bullying anybody or, or uploading um, inappropriate photos or videos then you're good right so no illegal photos and videos and no death threats and cyber bullying you're golden, right? You can say that you're a Trump supporter, you're good. You can say you're a Biden supporter, you're good. You can say what you can say whichever political thing you want if you want to talk politics on there. But you don't necessarily have to talk politics. I post, you know, photos about my family. I just I do what I what I do on Twitter, I do it on Parlor. I just know that whatever I post on Parlor is not going to be censored. And that's the reason why you can turn on music, babe. That's the reason why that um you know, I use it. So I've been very active on Twitter. Um but you know, I haven't deleted my Twitter account, and uh, Miwi's like a bus. I gave it another try again, but Miwi's just like, Ugh. I don't know. So <laughs> yeah, um, and of course Instagram. Instagram, I'm active on here quite a bit, only because I'm pushing to push my IGTV channel to to greatness. I call it greatness. But yeah, anyways, so that's pretty much what. What worked for me when I traveled, really, was Google Fi. Google Fi took first place, surprisingly, and Google Fi on T-Mobile took first place, followed by AT&T Business Elite, which shocked the hell out of me because Business Elite lines have a high QCI level compared to uh, consumer postpaid or even prepaids. Well, obviously, over prepaids. Prepaids have a, 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 very, a very low uh, QCI level. What I mean by low is not the number, but like where it stands on the bracket. And QCI... Uh, levels is basically like you can uh, I guess the best way to explain it is like um, your priority your priority on the network right so if you have like a QCI level of one two or three you know obviously you're gonna have fast data speed connections and you know very strong cellular connectivity um, prepaid usually have a QCI level of like eight nine you know so obviously they're not prioritized over consumers. Consumers usually have like a, like a QCI level of like, you know, I guess you would say like five, four, three, something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, I was surprised that AT&T Elite was actually beat out by Google Fi, you know? So, but I mean, I'll get all, I'll get all into that when I do the live stream, probably later on tonight. Probably just kick back in the backyard, do a quick live, um, live podcast and just talk about the days of google fi like all the good stuff about it when it first started when it was known as project fi uh some of the cool things that you could do with it like i don't know if if, if, if anyone remembers but if you wanted to have an all-in-one app like your phone calls your text your chat your video calling in one hangouts was like the app to use on google fi because you could connect your your google fi number to hangouts and use uh if you and use the hangouts um 
the Hangouts Dialer app. And basically, you can do phone calls from Hangouts, you can do text messaging from Hangouts, and then you can do like chat from Hangouts, and you can do video calling from Hangouts, which, you know, uh, video calling on Hangouts wasn't nearly, wasn't that good. Um, it's not as good as Duo is. But, I mean, you know, I'll be talking about that later on. Um, just the good old days of Google Fi to what it's become right now. There's no audio? No. Well, I'm about to jump off anyways. But, um, yeah. So, be on the lookout for that. I might do that. I'll, I'll tweet it out. I'll tweet it out if, uh, if I decide to do a quick live tonight on YouTube. Just kind of recapping the glory days of Google Fi. To just be like my first podcast of 2021 on YouTube. Um, Because right now, uh, me and the missus are going to go head over and get some get some food um groceries groceries and that's pretty much that you had a good time at the protest no hangouts does work with gmail hangouts no longer works with gmail huh I mean, Hangouts is losing a lot of its ability. Like, I've already got notified on Hangouts. It already gave me that message that um, you can't use your Google Voice number with Hangouts anymore. So, look up, but I, Hangouts is about to sail off into the sunset. It's, it's pretty much on its last thread. Yeah, it's pretty much dead already. <laughs> so, it's like kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about, you know, just like how well Hangouts was with... Google Fi and, and Google Fi's early day features and stuff like that and what it's become now. I think we really talk about that. Really surprised. Big shout out to Google Fi. Um, for, yeah. I guess you could say T-Mobile as well because, you know, T-Mobile is the company that they piggyback off of. But, I mean, there were a few times that it did switch over to U.S. Cellular. So, okay. But, yeah. All that later on. Uh, thanks for everyone that came in right now to come check out this quick little live here on the gram. You guys are clutch. Keep it awesome. Keep it locked. I'll see you guys next time. As always, aloha. Why is it trying to invite myself? <laughs> it was. Like, it came up and was like, invite me. Like, why is it going to invite me? I'm running this.